On today's video, we're gonna take an okay website and gonna make it a pretty cool website in just a few minutes while I'm teaching you some design principles and some development and Webflow concept. So it's going to be super fun. Let's dive right into it. So I asked on Twitter to people drop links to website that they want me to improve or redesign and Kia here sent me his web fly, uh, website for Mac Junkie making IT so simple, it's invisible. Now, I like minimalistic websites. I love typographic websites. Nice, but I think that there's few issues here. Number one, there's some hierarchies issues here that we definitely need to fix. So we're gonna do that very quickly. And then I think that we can take this website and make it much more awesome by adding some creativity here and using web technologies to make this creative idea come to life because there's a, a really cool thing going on here with the idea of making IT invisible. And we can use this concept to create a very cool effect as if the website maybe is invisible and you're kind of like by moving your cursor, you can reveal what's underneath it. It's gonna be so much more playful. It's gonna make it really, really fun to interact with and hopefully make the make junkie brand look more fun. All right, so let's start with it. I'm gonna start off by uh, taking this into Figma. And the reason I'm going into Figma, it's just I can play and move things around very, very fast. I don't have to think about this. All right, so what are the problems that we have here? Number one, the button book a free call and the logo Mac Junkie both look the same. So it's confusing. Is Mac Junkie a button? Like they're taking the same kind of like hierarchy and grabbing my attention at the same time. So this is problem number one. I definitely need to fix this. Very simple to fix. Then the other thing is everything on the page is one single group. They're all grouped together. And it's kind of like, it's a problem from a hierarchy perspective because we're not sure where to look first. We're looking at the same direction. So maybe grouping it, separating maybe the navigation from the actual text and creating like better hierarchies here, um, gonna make it better website. So let's just duplicate this, right? So that we have before and after very clear and see how we're gonna do this. So number one thing that I wanna do here is just for this Mac junkie, let's get rid of the background. Let's make the text actually maybe this uh, uh, orangey red and make it a little bit bolder. This can be, this can actually look like a logo here. And maybe just let's align it top and left, kind of like a normal navigation so that we have this group as a navigation. And now we can take this thing and instead of leaving it in the middle, maybe align it to kind of like bottom left. This already looks like a better layout. We have two groups. It's easier to, uh, your attention is being directed here. Maybe I'll make this a little bit bolder and maybe even a little bit bigger, uh, maybe even 95 here to kind of have this as a more bigger element. Now here, it's, it's actually pretty weird that we have heading, subheading, and then the button is actually at the end of the subheading. And then you have kind of like the text Who's gonna read this text after the call to action? It's pretty weird. So maybe we need to take this button here and just place it after at the end, right? First have them read one, two, three, and then if you wanna make book a free call, then you do it. I think this already in just like a couple of minutes, much better layout, much better hierarchies. And we can look here at the kind of like before and after already looks so much cooler. Now let's talk about improving this and adding some the creative concept that we have. So what I was thinking about is what if we create kind of like a layer on top of everything here? So let me just create this kind of like a layer on top of everything. And instead of having this fill, let's change this to a gradient and maybe like a radial gradient. And uh, let's make this, let's see what, if this is black and this is uh, maybe white and transparent. Actually, this is transparent as well. So let's make it. Okay, so what if we have something like this where you know, we can maybe even make this smaller. So we have this gradient. Now it, it looks like kind of like a flashlight. Let's get rid of this. Um, like a little flashlight that we have here. And pe when people move around, they can kind of like discover what's in here because it's invisible, right? Maybe black is actually a little bit too much. Maybe if we go with white and make it not 100%, but a 90%. So people can a little bit see here below that there is something here and they just want to play around and discover it. I think this will look better. We're probably going to put the navigation on top of this overlay so that they can always see the logo. Um, and one more thing that we can do here that I think is kind of like playful and nice is if I'm going to take the, the heading that we have here, where's the heading that we have here? Making IT invisible. 
Let me have a duplicate of this on top of everything, but I just, I'm gonna delete the so simple, it's invisible. Making IT invisible. So what we have right now, I guess if we're playing around with this radial thing again, is when, when people are not hovering on top of it, it's just making IT invisible and then you can scroll and see that it's so simple, it's invisible. And now I think it kind of adds like two meanings into the website. You're seeing it invisible IT and then you play around and you understand why it's invisible because it's so simple because Mac Junkie helps you to make things like you're not even going to see them. All right, I feel like this is gonna be a very cool concept. Let me show you how I very, very quickly developed this using Webflow. All right, so I have a Webflow project here and I've set this up pretty much the same. Let me show you how this is structured. Basically, we have here a page wrapper, basically a div that holds everything together, and it's basically set up to be a flex with justify with space between so that we have the first group, the navigation at the top, and the hero content aligning to the bottom. And that's because the page wrapper is set up to be 100% viewport height to take up the whole screen. Basically, so we have a group, uh, a wrapper for the whole screen, aligning the navigation to the top and the content to the bottom. And the con content is basically just heading one, heading two, paragraph and a button. Very, very simple. So how are we gonna create this very, very cool effect on top of it? So first of all, I want to understand how I'm going to do this. Here, I was playing around with the actual radial thing, but I think that in Webflow, I'm, I'm going to have to basically create basically a div that holds this, um, this gradient and I'm going to animate this div moving around with an interaction to follow my mouse. That's how I want to do it. However, when I'm moving it here, for example, I don't want this to get out of the page so that we start having scrolls and stuff like that. So for that, I'm going to have to wrap it inside of a kind of like a mask wrapper that is going to have overflow hidden. If this sounds a little bit too advanced, you know, you can check out our other videos or of course the Webflow Masterclass, but I'm gonna show you very quickly how we're gonna set this up. So um, first I'm going to add a new div here and I'm gonna call this, let's call this the mask wrapper. And for this mask wrapper, let's just set it to fixed, uh, position fixed so that it's on top of everything else. Let's give it a Z index of, you know, 10. So it's on top of everything else. And uh, yeah, take up the whole kind of like screen and make sure that overflow is hidden. So when the, the actual gradient inside moves, it's not going to create an overflow, which is basically the, you know, the scroll bars that we see that are annoying and basically a sign of bad development. All right, inside of this mask wrapper, let's add another div that is basically going to be the gradient, right? So let's call this div grad, for example. And yeah, set this up to, now this one, I actually need it to be bigger than the screen because it's going to move around. So for the width and height, I'm going to set it up as 200 uh, viewport width and 200 viewport height. So it's double than the actual screen size. And as a background, let's add a gradient here. Let's go to the radial gradient. Um, yep, we're gonna have to change the Z index of the navigation as well. Oh, actually I wanted the navigation to be on top. So that's actually a good thing. So let's take for the gradient, uh, this is going to be white color, 100%. No, we wanted 90% so that people can see a little bit of what's going on. Yep, 85 is good. And this one should be white, but 0% actually. So this is kind of like the whole. So let's reduce the alpha to zero. And let's make this, let's bring them together so that the, hole is kind of like the edge is sharper. Okay, I think this is, we've got it here. So what we're seeing here right now is because the div is much bigger, we're basically seeing the hole somewhere around here. Now we wanna go ahead and animate this, move this around just to, so that I can show you how it looks if we would go ahead and add maybe a transition effect here. Uh, sorry, not a transition effect, but um, transform effect, sorry, my bad, if I would move this, now you can see how we're moving, basically moving around the the whole kind of like the spotlight. Okay, so let me get rid of this and let's animate this uh, using an interaction. So let's go into the interactions panel 
and let's go ahead and add, add a page trigger while mouse is moving in viewport. That's what we want. We're going to create a new mouse animation and let's go ahead and play this. I'm going to give it a name. Let's call this grad animation. Now we're going to need to pick the element that we want to move, which is the grad. Now we have to animate it across two axes, the X axis, which is left, right. So let's go ahead and add a movement here for the left, right. So uh, for the X, yeah, when it's zero, let's go ahead and set the uh, X axis to maybe minus 100 viewport width. I'm not sure that it's working. Yeah, it's actually working. And then when it's at 100, meaning at the right side of the screen, let's see what happens if it, we move it back to zero. Okay, I think that's okay. Let's preview this. Okay, you can already see that the animation for left and right is animating correctly. Now we need to animate the Y axis. So let's add, let's make sure that we're selecting the grad. Let's add a move animation on the Y axis. And let's do the same. So let's animate it to minus 100 viewport height at the top. Hmm, we'll see in a second if this works. And when it gets to the bottom, let's move it back to zero. Let's play this. Okay, I think this works, but I think that the gradient that I have here, kind of like the whole spotlight is too big. So let's go ahead and make it a little bit smaller so that the animation is cooler. Here's the radial gradient. Let's go ahead and make it a little bit smaller like this. And let's play around. Let's go ahead and play this. Okay, so now it's working. Okay, so overall, we've got the animation and interaction actually working. Now the thing that I wanna do is bring the making IT invisible on top of everything else. So if you remember, we created this mask wrapper to be at a Z index of 10. So that's kind of like the level or the layer. So what I want to do is here in the hero content, let me actually go ahead and hide the mask wrapper for a second, just so that we can edit what's going on below. So for this making IT, I'm going to select the text and I'm going to add a span to it so that I can give it a class. So let me call this bring to top, bring to sop, but whatever. <laughs> and now I can change the position of this element and let's change it from static to relative because that's going to give me access to the Z index. So now I can give this a Z index that's higher, something like 15. And let's do the same for the invisible. I'm going to give that a span as well. And we already have a class bring to sop. All right. So that should work. Let's go ahead and bring back our gradient. Let's make that visible. And now you can see that Making IT invisible is always on the top and we can just play around with this. I still think, by the way, that the gradient is too big. So I'm going to go ahead into the gradient just to make it a tiny bit smaller because I think the effect is nicer when the spot is just a tiny bit smaller. You get more playful experience that way. Okay, overall we're done, but there's actually one technical problem here that and you can see that I can't actually click on the button. And the reason is that we have a layer, the, the gradient, the mask wrapper is in layer number 10, right? And it's taken up the whole screen. So it's basically blocking everything underneath. So I can't actually go ahead and click on the button. Now, I knew there is like a line of code that you can add to fix this issue, but I'm an auto coder and I never remember these things. And so I have my good friend, ChatGPT, help me out. So I open up ChatGPT and I basically wrote, on my Webflow project, I have a div that's set to fix to create an overlay. However, I don't want that div to be presenting, preventing me to clicking on the element below it on a lower Z index. How can I fix that? I literally just spell out my problem to my mentor, ChatGPT, basically explained this to me, but it actually gave me something like that I can't do because he thought that uh, Webflow has a custom styles section with a custom CSS property, which is coming soon, but I guess ChatGPT lives in the future. But for now, I just told him, just give me the custom code. And he basically gave me the custom code. It told me, add a style, mask wrapper, because I told him this element, it's called mask wrapper, pointer event none. All right, so that should solve it. Let me copy this. And let me actually see that my element is actually called mask wrapper. Yeah, it is called mask wrapper. All right, let's go back into the page. 
head it into our custom code here in the head area and add this. All right, so we've got mask wrapper, pointer event, none. All right, to see if this works, I'm actually going to have to save and I'm going to have to publish and we'll be able to see if this is working. And we're excited to see, we're excited to see Get it being published. All right, so everything is working and the text is selectable and the button is clickable. So the custom code actually works. All right, I'm gonna wrap it up here, although I know what you're asking yourself, but what happens on mobile? On mobile, we don't have a cursor. What's going to be the effect over there? So I'm not gonna solve it on this video. What I would say is that I would make sure that this interaction only works on desktop by toggling it off on tablet and portrait. And I would create something else. Maybe we can have the whole static and people scroll through and reveal the information that way. There's so many other creative, or we can animate the, the whole moving around. There's so many creative ideas that we can solve for uh, desk for tablets and mobiles, but I'm gonna leave this to another video. Let me know if you like this video and if you want me to upgrade your websites or other websites, let me know in the comments below and I'll see you in the next video. Peace out.